In this video, we'll see how to calculate the diaphragm design forces. These are the forces that we use to design the shears, the quarter forces, and the collector forces in diaphragms. Shown below is the building, the schematic building, that we'll be using in our example. I'll tell you more about it soon. Now, let's switch over to the spreadsheet we'll be looking at for this exercise. Over on the left-hand side, I have some basic parameters that we'll use to calculate the base shear. Next to that is the schematic building. It's a five-story building. I'm not specifying the seismic force resisting system, but we do have to know the weights and the heights. In the case of the third floor, the height is 32 feet. Next to that, I'm showing all the relevant equations. We'll go over those when it's time to go over them. And at the bottom, I have the main table where we'll do the work. Let's start at the upper left-hand side. And while we're at it, let's do some nice little tricks that help make life easier in Excel. We'll start by naming our cells. I'll come over here and name the cell SDS. I'll name this cell IE, enter. And I'll name this cell R. Oops. R is what Excel uses for a row. We can't use that, so I'll call it R factor, R fac. Now I've given these names and we'll see how we use it. To calculate the base shear, I need the factor C sub S. We multiply C sub S times the total weight and that gives us the base shear. If we look at the note here, I'm assuming that the building's period is such that we're in the constant portion of the spectrum. If that's the case, C sub S is equal to SDS divided by R, the R factor divided by the importance. That's C sub S. And the shear is equal to C sub S times the total building weight. Well, let's look at this table a little bit more. We have each level in one column, the height of each level in the next column, the weight of each level in the other column. You can see that these weights correspond to the weights that are given in the diagram. Here, I'm simply summing all the weights from the previous cells. We'll name this cell, now that I have it calculated, C sub S. And the shear is equal to C sub S times the total weight, or 420 kips. Let's continue calculating the seismic forces for the seismic force resisting system. Here I'm calculating the term H times W. If we look over here at this note, I'm assuming that the K factor is equal to 1. Recall, as we can see in the equation over here for calculating CVX that H is raised to a factor K depending on the period of the building. We're assuming in this calculation that the period of the building is such that K is equal to 1 and that's not unreasonable for a five-story building. So we multiply H times W with no K factor, do that for each cell, and add in the total in this cell. CVX is equal to W times H for each story times the total down here. So if I look at any given story, that's the equation. And then the seismic load for each story is CVX times the base shear. Well, let's make our life easier. Let's name this here V and then FX, the shear on each level is CVX times V. Copy this down and I can do the sum of all the values. I just do this to check to make sure that the 420 here is equal to the 420 there. So these are the forces that are applied at each level for design of the seismic force resisting system. At the top story, it's 80 kips, 129, 98, 67, and 43. However, those aren't the forces that we use to design the diaphragm. And the reason for this 
is that the forces in the diaphragm could be higher if the building is vibrating in higher modes. I won't say more about that because the goal in this video is to focus on how we calculate the equation. The main equation that we use to calculate the design forces for the diaphragm is given here in this third row. And the important thing to notice here is the summation. The summation goes from I equals X, which is the given level that we're talking about, up to N. So this is the summation of all the levels from the level of interest up to the top. So this first expression in the numerator is the sum of all the seismic design forces from the level that we're talking about up to the roof. This is the sum of all the weights from the level that we're talking about up to the roof. In this equation here, well, at the roof there's nothing above it, so I'll just take the force. But for each subsequent level, I'm going to take the sum from above, add in that story. The sum from above, add in that story. And I can copy this down. Same thing for the weight. I'm going to take the weight here, take the weight from above, add in the weight from this story. The weight from above, add in this story. And of course I can just copy this down. I don't have to type each one out. The sum of the FIs from that story up divided by WI from that story up times the actual weight of the story. I'll type it in again so we see it. The sum of the FIs from that story up divided by the W the sum of the W's from that story up times the weight of that story. We can drag this down. So this is what the formula evaluates out to. Now we do have upper and lower bounds that we have to worry about. So if we look at the min, 0 0.2 times SDS times the importance factor times the weight of the story. And for the max, 0 0.4 times SDS times the important factor times the weight of the story. We can copy these down. And then FPX is the value in the formula, but it has to be larger than the min and smaller than the max. And we can do that with a few nested min and max functions. I'm going to start with the min. And what we're going to do here is check whether the upper limit or the formula govern. So I'm going to check the upper limit, but I'm not just going to check the formula. I'm going to check the highest of the formula and the lower limit. So I'm going to say max of the formula and the lower limit. We can now copy this down. And these values are the forces that we're going to use to design the diaphragm. So the roof diaphragm is going to be designed for 80.3 kips, the same as the force applied to the lateral force resisting system. The diaphragm will be designed for 140 kips, that's given by the formula, and that's larger than the force that is applied to the lateral force resisting system. The third story is given by the formula that's also larger than the force for the lateral force resisting system. The second story is actually given by by the min, uh, as is the bottom story. Those are larger than the values that are applied to the lateral force resisting system. So in this exercise we've seen how we calculate the design forces for the diaphragm, for shears, for cord forces, and for collectors. Subsequent videos will show us how to calculate those specific design forces based off of the FPX that we've calculated here.